Hey everybody, David Nagel here. Welcome to another episode of the Successful Mind Podcast. Today I want to talk to you about the most important decision that you will ever make. You know, decision is an interesting topic because it's our decisions that enact our ability and our power to choose, which is the greatest power that we have. Now, I know that if you've been listening for some time, you hear me repeat that over and over again. But the truth is, is I can't tell you that too much. I can't say it to myself too much. We live in a world that's constantly causing our mind to be highly reactive to the wild and crazy stuff that's always going on around us. And it's very easy for our mind to get hijacked and go down very different, dark or negative roads in our life. So understanding that our greatest power is our ability to choose. And as we choose, we create our life by, you can't, you cannot be reminded of that enough. But when it comes to decision, one of the interesting things that uh, I learned very early on that I had not actually expected to learn as being anything substantial in a person's growth, by the way, I mean, I guess it sounds kind of silly now saying that, but um, it seemed a little bit different then. Somebody said to me one time, he's, he said to me, this is my mentor, he said, you know, when you grow up, you're not taught how to make a decision. And it had never occurred to me that that was correct. I mean, so much so that when he said it to me, I thought, no, that can't possibly be true. And the more I thought about it, and the more he gave me examples of it, the more I found out that it was exactly correct, that most people are not taught how to make a decision. Even though with everything that we do every day, it's nothing but a series of choices and decisions that we're making. The problem is, is that almost all of them are unconscious decisions. Over the 25 years that I've been teaching people, a pattern had emerged over time that I thought was really extraordinary. And the, what I learned was that most people don't make decisions from what they want. They make decisions based on what's presented in front of them as the only options that there are. And we kind of, we're kind of raised like that. If you think about, you know, your parents, for instance, how often do you, did your parents say, what do you want? What do you want for dinner? What do you want for breakfast? What do you, what do you want today? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? They usually presented us with choices, like you could have this or you could have this, right? Uh, even when we go to school, it's like you could take this class or you could take this class. You could go to work for this company or you could go to work for this company or you could go to school or not go to school. The world is always presenting us with these choices, but they're not the only choices that we have uh, to make. But if that's all we're exposed to, we get kind of programmed into the idea that those are the only things we have to choose from. But we're missing something very important in this. And that is, what do we truly want in life? Very often, that is not considered a decision to be taken seriously by any person because most people say, well, you have to be realistic. Right? You, can't, you can't have whatever it is that you want. So don't go down that crazy road. Here's what's most realistic. What's your background? What's your education? What skills are you good at? Do you have any talents or not? And then a person will often spend the rest of their life just going down that road with um, really making very few choices at all that are based on what they truly want. Well, I had an experience a um, long time ago where I thought I was making decisions based on what I want. And I think to some degree I was because my life was definitely getting better. It was heading in a much better direction. However, I still had areas of my life where unbeknownst to me, my decisions were highly being controlled by other people of influence in my life. And I didn't realize this until one day when I was looking at something to make a decision over. And I was saying to myself, I found myself looking at it and something about it just didn't seem right to me. And I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about it. And I thought to myself, is this something that I want? Or is this something that somebody else wants and I'm just going to go along with it? And when I thought that thought, I literally got a chill down my spine. And I knew that I was on to something right there. And, the, and then I kind of sat back. I was sitting at my desk. 
I kind of sat, sat back in my chair and I started thinking, how many decisions am I actually making because this is what I want versus what somebody else wants? And it scared me. I mean, it scared me to my core because it became extraordinarily obvious in that moment that I was making more decisions based on what other people wanted in my life than I was actually making from what I wanted. And the part that scared me was that I realized I don't know that I know what I want. In other words, I got to the place where I had made so many decisions based on keeping other people happy that I couldn't tell you if this was like if you presented something to me, if I was making the decision because I wanted it or because I knew that it would make somebody else happy, it created tremendous confusion and chaos in my mind. I thought I this is this is frightening because it's like all of a sudden you realize you're losing yourself. You don't even really know who you are. Like if you don't know what you want, how do you determine who you are? It really does start with, well, what do you think about yourself? But the frightening part about that is how much of our lives are actually created. Like we, we decide who we're going to be, but it's based on whether somebody else liked those decisions or not. Did you get approval for being this way or did you get disapproval for being a certain way? And then you adjusted those choices based on the people that were around you and whether they actually approved of something or not. I found out that many people wake up somewhere in their life and they realize that they've done exactly just that, but they don't know how to get out of it. It becomes a self-imposed trap. And one of the reasons is because Generally, when people wake up to this, they've lived a few years and they have a tremendous amount of responsibility around them that they need to fulfill in their life. And it's almost like making a decision based on what they truly want is almost like a luxury. Like, I can't do that. I don't have time for to do that. I don't have the money. I don't have, you know, support in my life that's going to upset other people if I start choosing to be, do, or have something else. So that day, I decided that I was no longer going to make decisions based on what anybody else wanted. When I thought about that, and I thought, okay, what do I want? Nothing came to mind. My subconscious was not releasing my desire into my consciousness so that I could actually tell you what I wanted. Anyway, long story short, I decided that I was going to start making decisions from that place, but I had to do something to get my desire to release again inside of me so that I could actually know what I wanted. And here was the process of what I started doing. I started with this idea that any time that you're creating success in your life, where you're trying to accomplish a goal, no matter what it is that you're doing, the fastest way to get there is to first understand where you are in your own growth. Where are you on this journey that you're taking for yourself, right? I had done that many times unbeknownst to the idea that I was, my mind was also kind of focused in a different direction with pleasing other people. But I said, okay, where am I right now? What? So what do I actually know that I want? And I literally had to start breaking it down to very, very simple things in during the, during the day, like in my life on a daily basis. Like, what do you actually want to eat? What temperature do you want the house at? Do you want to go for a walk, right? Do you want to watch this movie? Do you want to read this book? And I had to ask myself, do I really want that? And I, so I had to get in touch with me again. Anyway, I worked my way out of this problem and then started getting back into big desires and dreams that I had for myself. But it took a little while to do it. And then as I began working with people during my career, I remembered that exercise that I did. And when I recognized that somebody really didn't know what they want, that's where I began to start them. Like this might sound, this might not sound exciting or inspiring, but if you, if you're a person, if I say to you, what do you really want? And you can't really tell me, right? If you, in other words, if you're repeating what you've already told someone else. If you're repeating the same thing that you've always repeated, but you're not making any progress. If you're stuck in any kind of a situation, if your income is stuck, if your relationships are stuck, you don't know what you really want, right? Because you're stuck. So if I say, what do you really want? And you cannot tell me very clearly what you want, you might be suffering from the same problem that I had. In other words, your decision 
ability is there, but what it is that you desire has been pushed way back into a corner someplace in your mind because you've had too many experiences that say that you can't have it, you shouldn't have it, it's going to make other people upset, you don't have the money, you don't have the resources, and you can see how this goes on and on and on. So start where you are. Start like I did. Look at the small things that you're doing every day. And the, the key here is that you're going to reprogram your, your subconscious mind so that it starts releasing that desire to your conscious mind where you know what it is that you want. But what you must do is you must make yourself conscious of the decisions that you're making on a daily basis. Yes, I want to write with this pen. Yes, I don't want to answer that phone call right now. Yes, I'm going to or not going to answer that email. Yes, I, this is what I'm going to make myself for dinner tonight. Yes, I'm going to go on that walk. Yes, I'm going to watch this movie. No, I'm not going to do something that I don't want to do. And you start there and you give yourself permission to want what you want. Now, sometimes you'll, you'll see that you want something, but then you'll think at the same time, well, I can't do that. That's where you have to break through a little bit. Generally, when we think that we can't do that, it's somebody else's voice in our head that's telling us, no, you can't do that. You don't have the time. You don't have the money. You don't have the resources. You've got all these responsibilities. That's silly. That's immature. Whatever it is that it might be. you got to push those voices aside, quiet them down, and say, this is what I want. If you want to buy yourself something that's seemingly of no importance at all, like it's not going to change your life in any big way and may cause cost a fair amount of money, there is a reason that your desire is being pulled toward that thing. And generally in these situations, it's to wake up your desire because when you start going after what you want, you do something that most people never do. You start treating yourself well. And when you treat yourself well, you start loving yourself again. And when you start loving yourself again, you get in touch with the inner desire of what it is that you want, why you're here, the purpose of what you're here for. And if you, if you follow that process, it continues to expand over time in your life. And you'll find that your desires get bigger and brighter and greater. And because you're actually allowing yourself to do it, your ability to choose starts to become very, very strong. So let's kind of go back and look at this a little bit. Think about this. How many choices, maybe take a couple of days, right, and keep a, something to keep notes on and write down every time you make a decision or every time you make a choice, no matter how mundane it may be, and then ask yourself this question. How, how often do I do this and I don't even think about it, right? Well, the answer would be, all day, every day, all the time. And we're and generally we're not thinking about it because we're just choosing basically to do most of the same things over and over again. So the process of choice becomes very disillusioning for us. Like we don't see it. It gets pushed way back in the background. We don't realize that we're actually choosing. And sometimes we get into what's known as decision fatigue. Like we're making all these different decisions and then somebody will say, hey, what do you want for dinner? And you're like, oh my God, I can't even think of another thing right now. You choose. Whatever you choose is totally fine because we're not consciously making those choices. So when we consciously make them, what we're doing is we're creating a, neuro, a new neural pathway in our mind. We're going from the idea of just reacting to our world to staying very conscious about what we want and exercising that choice. No different than if you were to exercise in a gym or lift weights. You lift weights, your arms get stronger. When you exercise your ability to choose, your ability to choose gets stronger and it becomes more conscious. You also develop a strength which is needed in life to create the life that you want, a strength to know what to say yes to and what to say no to. And then you might think to yourself, well, how will I know? You know because either you want it or you don't. And I mentioned this to somebody the other day, and they said, well, we can't possibly start there. And I said, well, where else would you start, right? Everything, if you're an adult, it, everything that you choose should come down to whether you want to or you don't want to. And if that sounds awkward to you, if that doesn't sound right, you better sit down and think about that for a moment. You're an adult. 
You get to choose your life any way that you want it to be. And if that is really bothering you, sit down and write, just get a piece of paper and write out what comes to your mind when you hear that. You're an adult. You get to choose everything you want and the way that you want it to be in your life. If you find yourself going into, I can't do that because I have to do all these other things, or I can't do that because of all these other people or all these other circumstances, you've got to realize you've been disconnected from the divine side of your choice. And I say divine because your ability to choose is divine. And there's a lot of people out there that say we don't have free will. You will always find that those individuals are completely disconnected from the divine. Because what you choose is actually a creative process. It starts from within, not from without. It's not about choose between these two objects in life. When you start there, then it appears that you don't have a choice. Because one of those things is always inevitable in what it is that you're doing. But when you start with the divine in mind, right, you're coming from the creative place inside of yourself. You're coming from that intuition, that desire that is drawing you into the life that you want to create for yourself. And you can choose anything there because that's where all possibilities exist. Now, of course, the world is constantly going to try to pull you in a direction where it says you have to choose amongst the things that we tell you. You do not. You absolutely do not. And if you're doing that and it's making you miserable, stop. Make that the first choice, right? The greatest decision choice that you can make is to start to wake up to the idea that this is your greatest power, but you need to exercise it to bring it into full conscious awareness so that you can start choosing from the inside out, not the outside in. Almost all the world chooses from the outside in. You've got to choose from the inside out. What do you really want? And start where you are. I am a full believer in going after the big audacious goal in our life, something that inspires us and makes us want to jump through hoops and do all kinds of grand, grand wonderful things. I think that's great, and I think there's a time and place for it. But when a person is in a place where they can't even think about what that is that they might be. The problem isn't that it's not there inside the person. The problem is, is they can't figure out how to access it. And they can't figure out how to access it because some part of their mind has shut off the idea that they can actually want anything for themselves. Start there where you are, right? And I promise you, in a short period of time, you will set bigger goals for yourself. You will achieve bigger things. You will create the life that you can imagine in your mind because there's nothing that you can't think of that you can't have. Everything is already around you and you're connected to it, but you have to learn to make a decision to do it. All the great books talk about the idea of making a decision. Uh, Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich wrote a, a, a dedicated a whole chapter to making decision. Maybe you should read that. But in, uh, in any regards, start where you are right now and start making conscious decisions about the things that are just in your life in the moment. Say, am I choosing this because I want it? Or am I choosing this because somebody else says that I should do it? Or am I choosing it because if I don't choose it, somebody else might be upset if I don't choose it? That's not a choice right? That's, you're allowing yourself to be manipulated by other people's ideas and opinions. Get back to your center self. Get back to the part of you that has that divine power to choose. And I promise you, it'll change your life very rapidly. Take care, everyone.